Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2022. If you do not, if you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure this book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today I will solve some problems that you will find on page number 129. Please turn to it. Page 129, the very first problem as you can see is already on the blackboard. We are told that we have three numbers on which we are supposed to perform, perform some operation with three other numbers and this is the result. Essentially it's simply A, D, A times D plus B, C, B, E time plus C, F. That's all it is. Very simple, very straightforward. A gift. Sometimes we, there are a few problems in the exam like this, which are gift. So 1 times 1 is just 1, which is just 1, squ one squared. Negative 2 times negative half. 3 times 1 third. 3 times 1 third. 1 squared is just 1. This negative and this negative becomes positive, and 2 is going to cancel out, so it's just positive 1. And this 3 is going to cancel out, this is positive 1. The answer is 3. Simple, straightforward. Number 111. Number 111, we are told that m squared plus p squared has to be less than 100. We are further told that both m and p have to be positive and they have to be integers. They have to be whole number. What we are looking for is the greatest value. greatest possible value for m times p. Let's see what we can do. Here are the answer choices. a, b, c, d and e. We are told we are given 36, 42, 48, 49 and 51. I'm going to change this marker. It's dying. There's not much left, left in it. It's more of it. Okay, so what, we, what can we do? Well, 36 it cannot be, for example, 36 cannot be 2 times 18 or 3 times 30, uh, 3 times uh, 3 times 12. It cannot be anything like this. Neither P nor M can be two-digit number because if they were two-digit number, for example, here, 12 squared alone is more than 100. Because M squared plus P squared is less than 100, both M and P throughout the entire process and throughout the entire uh, question has to be one digit. For example, they could be 6 and 6. There's no reason why it cannot be 6 and 6, 6 times 6. And that would work. That would work just fine. It would work because 6 squared, 6 squared plus 6 squared is less than 100. So that's a possible candidate. We're looking for the greatest possible value of m times p. So far m times p works out to be 36. 7, 42 was 7 times 6. 7 times 6 would work. 7 squared plus 6 squared is less than 100. That would work. Since we just found the product of m and p to be 42, 36 is not a candidate. It's no longer a contender. 48 was the same thing. 8 times 6. 8, 8 squared plus 6 squared. 8, 6 of 42. 8, 6 of 48 rather. 8, 6 of 48. But the problem here is that 8 squared plus 6 squared is exactly equal to 100. And therefore it is not less than 100. Which means C is not even a contender. So, so 49, there is, there is only one choice for it. It's a perfect square. It's just 7 squared plus 7 squared. And that, that does the job. That's less than 100. So far, 49 is the largest one, which means B is no longer a contender. And neither is E. E is not a contender because E, I hope you are able to see right away, that 51 is simply a product of two prime numbers, 17 and 3. That's the only way we can break it up. 17 and 3, and obviously you can't have 17 squared because it's going to be more than 100. So that's not even possible. The answer is 49. The largest product we can find of M and P, given the fact that M squared plus P squared has to be less than 100, is 49. That was 111, 112. In 112, let's see what we have in 112. In 112 we are given two equations. We are told that x over y is equal to c over d and we are also told that d over c is equal to b over a.
and we are given three statements, and our job to figure out is our job to figure out which of those three statements are true. Here's the first statement. The first statement says y over x is equal to b over a. Let's see what we can do. Well, this is x over y is equal to c over d, and this is d over c. Why don't we turn this into why don't we turn this into a reciprocal? d over c is same as c over d is equal to a over b. Oh, there you go. Since this is c over d and this is c over d, which means it has to equal a over b. There we go. x over y is equal to, oh, we're not quite done yet, is equal to a over b, and now we take a reciprocal of that one, which means y over x, y over x must be b over a, which is what this is. Statement one is true. Statement number two says that x over a is equal to y over b. Well, now that we have established that the statement one is correct, right here, statement one is correct, and from statement one, if you will see, all they're doing here is that they're moving the x up there and the and y over b. They're being the, moving the y down, the b down there, that's all. They're moving the b down here and they're moving the x over there. If you move the b down here, we're going to end up with y over b and bring the a over there, or rather, x over x on the top, we end up with x over a. There you go. Second statement also. Second statement is also true. The third statement says that y over a is equal to x over b. Let's see if that's possible. y over a. No, that's not possible. You see, the only way we can get here, if we were to cross multiply, if we were to cross multiply this one, what will end up is y times a is equal to b times x. There is no way to get this thing. It's impossible. The statement 3 is not true. Answer is, the answer is only only statement 1 and 2 are true. Statement number 3 is false. In 113, in 113 we are told that k is an integer. We are, for, we are looking for the least possible value, least value, least, least possible value of k. And what is given to us next is that 0 0.0025 times 0 0.025 times 0 0.0025 times 10 raised to k. The condition that we have to fulfill is that this quantity, this quantity that we just wrote, has to be an integer. We are told that this quantity is an integer. If this quantity is an integer, what's the least possible value of k? k has to be a whole number. What's the least possible value of k? Well, let's find out, shall we? So we want to make this into an integer. This quantity has to be an integer. If you were to move this decimal, 1, 2, 3, 4, by, multi by writing this in scientific notation, like this, we end up with 25. Similarly here, we have to move it 3 places, 1, 2, 3. So this is simply 25 times 10 raised to 3. So far this is the same as that. And similarly this one will simply be 25 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks like 5. There we go. Negative 4 and negative 3 is negative 7. Negative 7 and negative 5 is negative 12. In other words, in other words, if we had here 10 raised to 12, 10 raised to 12 will take care of all of this negative, it will negate everything, and what will end up at the end is simply 25 times 25 times 25. And that is an integer, not only is an integer, but it's not a multiple of 10, so we don't have to worry about any other exponents of 10. How do we know this is not a multiple of 10? Because odd numbers times odd numbers times odd number is going to be an odd number. As a matter of fact, it's very obvious it's going to end in a 5. So there is no 10 out of here, which means that the least possible value that k can assume is 12. It can be 13, it could be 14, it could be 14,000, but 12 is the smallest that we can find. If k is equal to 12, then this would be an integer. That was on, that was 113. Let's move on to 114. 114. In 114 we are told 
that a times a plus 2 is 24. We are also told that b times b plus 2 is also 24. The condition that we must fulfill is that a cannot be equal to b. a and b are to be different numbers. And we are, what we are looking for is, is there sum? Given the fact that they cannot be equal to each other, because if they could be equal to each other, it would be very simple. It's just 6 times 4 would do the job. But it cannot be obviously 6 times 4. because uh, Oh, it is 6 times 4, but A has to be 4. 4 times 6 is what I meant to say. There you go, you see? If A is equal to 4, that will do the job. But because A cannot be equal to B, maybe we can make B into a 6. But that will not do the job, because if we make B equal to 6, what will end up here is... 6 times 8, and that obviously does not equal to 4. What we need to do here is make b equal to negative 6. And that will do the job. A negative 6 and a negative 4 will give us 24. a is not equal to b. Now, now we can figure out what a plus b is. a, a, is, uh, a is 4, and b is negative 6. Therefore, the sum of a and b is negative 2. That was 114. 115, we are told that the distance from zero to, uh, from origin and this point, 4, 5, is same as, is same as, which one? Here is the first one, negative 3, 2, and negative 7 and 8, that's answer choice A. So we have five answer choices. Our job is to figure out a pair of uh, points where the distance is the same as what is given to us here, which is the distance from the origin to 4, 5. Because it is from origin to 4, 5, the distance is very easy to figure out. Very straightforward. It is simply 4 minus 0, which is just 4, and 5 minus 0, which is just 5. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for any quantity that equals that. Let's see what the distance is here. From negative 4 to negative 7, that's a distance of 4. Oh, that's a good, that's a good sign. We're looking for 4 squared. But from 2 to, but from 2 to 8, we have a 6. That won't do. That won't do. Answer is not A. Answer choice B says, negative 2, 1, and 3, 5. Let's see what we can do here. From negative 2 to positive 3, from negative 2 to positive 3, we have a 5. So it's 5 squared. And from 1 to 4, 1 to 5, we have a 4 squared. There we go. Same as this guy. The answer is B. The answer is B. You can try out C, D, and E yourself. You'll see that they, they all give you something other than 41. 4 squared plus 5 squared, that is. Number 116. In number 116, we are, told, we are told that we are having a voting take place for something. And Mr. Robin, Mr. Robin, we are told, he got 8,000, 8, no, it's not a dollar, it's a vote. He got 8,000 votes of uh, independent, independent votes. Plus he got 10% of party votes. The election is taking place. Some people have registered themselves as independent. They are not affiliated with either party, Republican or Democrat. They are independent. And this gentleman, Robin, got 8,000 of those votes. In addition to that, he got 10% of 10 of those votes for of those people who have registered themselves as being affiliated with either the party. So he got 10% of the party votes, 8,000 in independent votes, and this is what we know. We know that the total votes was n. That's the total votes. And we are told that of that, 40% of the votes were cast by people who are independent, not affiliated with either party that is, and 60% of the votes were cast by party votes. There we go. The question simply is, how many votes did R get? How many votes Mr. Robin got? Well, this part is very straightforward. He got 8,000 of these votes, and then he got 10% of the party votes. Party votes 
party votes we are told is 60% of N. This is the total votes. Six out of every ten votes that was cast was cast was a party vote, was cast by people who are affiliated with either of the two parties. So you got that's 60% of N, and he got 10% of that. So he got 10% of 60% of N. That's what he has. All we have to do is figure out what that is. Let's do it, shall we? 10% that's just 10 over 100. Off means times. 60% that's 60 over 100. Off means times N. Let's see what we can do. Divide top and bottom by 10, divide top and bottom by 10 again, there we go. So what we end up is 6 over 100, 6 over 100 is simply 6%. 6% 6 of N, that's what he got, plus the 8,000. There you go, that's how many votes he got. He got 8,000 independent votes plus 6% of the total amount, 6% of the total number. That's your answer, to 129. Let's see what we have in 130. In 130 we are told, or rather 117 is what I meant to say, we are told that the profit is equal to income minus cost. Obviously, profit when you're running any business is what you bring in as the revenue, your income, minus all the all the money that you spend on the on the on the cost. And we are told that for each of the first four months. The situation is like this, C equals I plus 32. For the next, for each of the next, for each of the next three months, we are told the situation is this. And for each of the last five months, we are told the income equals cost plus 10. There you go. The question simply is, what is the profit for the entire year? Because it is the year that we are dealing with. We have 4 months plus 3 months, that's 7 months plus 5 months, that's 12 months. So what was the total profit for the whole year? Let's, just, let's see what we can do. First thing we need to do is write all of these three equations in this form. Profit equals income minus cost. For example here, income minus cost. So we need to bring the C to this side and 30 to that side. When we bring 32 to this side, it's going to become negative. And what this implies is that negative 32 has to equal I minus C. What that tells us is that in the first four months, for each of the first four months, not for the entire four months, but for each of the first four months, we had a loss, a loss of $32,000 every month for four months. In the next three months, this implies that we must have I, I minus C plus is equals 36. I minus C will equal positive 36, which means we made a profit of $36,000 each month for the next three months. And for the last five months, it looks like we had a profit of 10000 We made a profit of 10000 for the last five months. Now, finding out the total profit for a year is quite straightforward. So our total profit is simply going to be negative 32 times 4. 30, loss of $32,000 for 4 months plus a profit of $36,000 for 3 months plus a profit of $10,000 for 5 months. There we go. We just have to figure out what that amount is. Let's see what we can do. 4 times negative 30 is going to be negative 120 and 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8. 30 times 3 is going to be 90. 30 uh, 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 and 3 times 6 is 18. You see this 3 is not a 3, it's a 30. 30 times 3 is 90. This 30, 30 times 4 is 120 and so on and so forth. And that's very straightforward, that's just 50. Let's see what we can do. I, I see negative 120 and a positive 90. Why don't we get rid of this positive 90 and make this into a negative 30. A negative 30 and a positive 50, why don't we get rid of this negative 30 and make that into positive 20. I see negative 8 and positive 18. Let's get rid of this one and make that positive 10. There we go. We had a total profit, looks like. It looks like we had a total profit of $30,000 for the whole year.
Number 118. Number 118. You have a semicircle. And we have a triangle that looks like this. A, B, C. We are told that this is 8. This is 6. It's a semicircle, we are told. And what we are looking for is the length of arc ABC. Since we are told, since we are told that it's a semicircle, the length of arc ABC is simply half the circumference. We just have to find half the circumference, but before we can figure out what the half the circumference is, we have to first figure out the radius. That's what we're going to do. And before we proceed with anything at all, we have to talk about one particular concept in geometry. The concept is this. If we have a semicircle, if we are told that this is a semicircle, then if you draw any triangle, for example, a triangle like this, or a triangle like this, as long as it goes to the other end, or a triangle like this, all of these triangles, these, these angles, let me put it in a different color, these angles, this is a right angle, this is a right angle, this is a right angle, it is always a right angle. It's an axiom, you have to know that. It's a fact. It's a fact. You don't need to prove it. It's axiomatic. It's a fact and because it's axiomatic, because it's an axiom, you simply have to know it. It is the right angle triangle. Which means if this is a right angle triangle, this is simply 4 times 2, this is 3 times 2, which means this side facing the right angle, which is the hypotenuse, must be 5 times 2. And that represents, that represents the diameter. Since the diameter is 10, the radius is just 5. And now, we know circumference is equal to pi, uh, 2 pi r. We're not looking for circumference, we're looking for half the circumference. There we go. It is just pi times r. Pi times r, and we know r is 5. So it's just 5 pi. Because r is 5. Don't get confused, I use small r and big r. It's, it's nothing, nothing to worry about, okay? Don't make a fuss about it. Number 119. Number 119. In 119, we are told that we have two products. Two products, P and Q. We are told that we are going to sold product P for $20, product Q for $17, and we are further told that we are going to sell we're going to sell twice as many. We're going to sell twice as many Q as P. Just give me one quick second here. I'm going to I'm going to look something up here if I can very quickly find it. If not, then we'll just forget it. So, axiom. I can't find it. As I said, axiom is a fact, something that you have to know. It, it does not require proof. And something that's a fact, we say it is axiomatic. That's the adjective. I'm looking for something, and I can't find it. I thought we learned this word in our vocabulary lesson. There you go, day number 38. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you shouldn't be interested in improving your vocabulary, on my channel you will find vocabulary, vocabulary videos, 100 of them. Just search for GMAT vocabulary words, GMAT vocabulary words, day number 38, the video will pop right up. That's the day when we learn this word axiomatic. We are going to sell twice as many, sold twice as many Q as P. Question simply is, what's the average price, average revenue? The average price, because for every three, for every three units that we sell, we are selling one of this, one of P, which is being sold for twenty dollars, and two, twice, twice as many, two of Q, and each of them is sell, is sold for seventeen dollars. So instead of every three, there is one and there is two, so that's three. That's the average price. 
that's 20 plus 34, that's 54. 54 divided by 3, let's divide 54 by 3. 5 is made up of 1, 3. 5 is 1, 3. After we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 4, because in the 24, and 24 is made up of 8 threes. 8 threes are 24. There we go. The average, the average revenue, the average price was $18. 120. In 120, we are told that we are going to carry four jugs at a time. We are going to put them in cartons. Put seven in each carton. Each carton can accommodate only seven jugs, we are told. And we are told that we have made 17 such trips. Each in each trip we carry four jugs. That's all we can carry. We're not going to carry fewer than that. We can't carry anything more than that. Apparently two in each hand. We're going to carry four jugs. We have made 17 trips and we're putting them in a carton. We're filling up cartons. Each carton can have seven jugs. Question simply is how many more do we need? How many more do we need to fill the last carton? Apparently uh, apparently after we finish the 17th trip, the last carton that we're working on apparently is not full. The question is how many more do we need to fill it up? Let's find out, shall we? So we have made we have made 17 trips and in each trip we know we can carry four jugs. Seven fours are twenty-eight, two eight, carry two. Oh, there you go. Uh, looks like we have carried so far 68 jugs and since each carton can accommodate 7 jugs it tells us that we need 2 more jugs need 2 more we need 2 more jugs to fill up the last carton that we are working on which apparently is the 10th carton 9 cartons are already full we are working on the 10th carton and in order to fill the 10th one we need exactly 70 because 7 times 7 times 10 we are too short number 121 there's not much in this problem, you just have to pay attention to the wording and that's all it is. The question itself is very straightforward. Number 121 falls in the same category. Again, you have to pay attention to the details, to the wording, and then work on it. Here is 121. It's not, not quite as straightforward. So here we're dealing with two years, last year and this year. Last year we were told that we had 20 more Republican than Democrat. Which means 20 more Republican, which means Republican that we had was D plus 20. Now, I want to make sure that you understand from the very beginning that I'm using letter R and letter D to represent the number of senators in the Senate last year, not this year. Do you understand? This R and D are the number of senators last year and number of Senate Republicans were 20 more than the number of Democrats. If we have the number of Democrats we need 20 more. And the total we are also told that the total is made up of R plus D. In other words every senator in the Senate was either a Republican or Democrat, no other parties and no independent. You know, what we are looking for is what is the value of the T. Let's see what happens this year. This year we are told that we have the same total which is T. But two fewer Republicans. We are told that we have two fewer Republicans. In other words, before we had Republican quantity was this one, we're going to use the same symbol. R represents the number of number of senators that we had in the Senate last year. Therefore the number of senators that we have this year would be simply be the number that we had last year, which was 20 more than Democrat, minus two. There we go. And the number of Democrats that we have is D minus, or D plus 2, obviously. There we go. Because we had D before, now we have two more. We are further told that the number of Republicans that we have is two-thirds of the total. Two-thirds of the total. Based on all of that, let's see what we can do, okay? I need the room, so we're going to erase this thing. I'm going to use this side to figure out what T is. So, 
using this this equation r over t has to equal two third. So we are working on this here, you understand? And this year, the number of Republican that we have is right here. D plus 20 minus 2. And the total we have is the same as before. Total that we had is the same as before. Which is which was, total that we had was R plus D. And the R, R we were told is 20 more than D. So this is 20 more than D. That total does not change. That total is still the same. So it's simply 2D plus 20. D plus D is 2D plus 20. That's the equation we have to work on. Now it's very straightforward. We no longer do this thing. We just have to work on simple linear equation here. Once we find out the value of D, we can figure out the total very easily. Because total is simply 2D plus 2D plus 20. Cross multiply. 2 times 2D is going to give us 4D plus 2 times 20 is going to give us 4D, 3 times, 3 times D is going to give us 3D, and this is 18, plus 20 and a minus 2 is 18, 18 times 3, 18 times 3 is, I don't know what 18 times 3 is, so let's subtract uh, 4D and 3D, 3D from both sides, and this will become D, D equals 3 times 18, 3 times 20 we know, I know is 60, so 3 times 18 must be 6 less than 60, that's 54. 54 minus 40, that's 14. Now we can put it back in here and we are done. So T must be 2 times D, which is 14, plus 20. 2 times 14 is 28, 28 plus 20 is 48. There you go. The total number of senators, both this year and last year in the Senate, was 48. Because obviously we were told the total did not change. Number 122. Number 122, we are given a painting, a painting that looks like this. And this painting is made up of four rectangles, we are told, and all the rectangles have the same exact dimensions. The dimension is, this is the width, this is the length, and this is also the length. From here to here is the same length as this one. Do you understand? And we are told that the area of this painting, we are told that the area of this painting is 4800 square inches. And this, this painting that we see is made up of four parts. One, two, three, four parts of equal areas, so we're just going to call it 4P. What we're looking for is the W. We want to find out what W is, the width. Divide both sides by 4. If we divide both sides by 4, we end up with 1 and 2, that's 1200. 1P, one part is made up of 1200, and one part is simply length times width. Maybe we should continue here now. This P is simply length times width, which is 1200. Assuming that I did not make any mistake already so far, 1200. And how much is length? Length is 1, 2, 3. 3W. Let's put it up here. It's getting too low. So we're going to pick this, we're going to pick this up here. L times W is 1200. And L we know is 3W. Divide, divide both sides by 3 again, so 3 is going to go away and this is going to become 400 which represents W times W which is W squared and therefore W is equal to 20. We were looking for the width and we just found the width, the width is 20 inches in this painting. Number 123. In number 123, in number 123, we are told that we have an account, a savings account, in which we have $800. And in that account, at the end of the first week, at the end of the first week, we're going to deposit 
Then we are told at the end of the second week, we're going to deposit two dollars. At the uh, third week, we're going to deposit three dollars, and so on and so forth. At the end of the 49th week, we're going to deposit $49 in the account, and, in the, in the, and at the end of the 50th week, we're going to deposit $50 in the account. The question simply is, how much money will I have in that account at the end of the 50th week? This is a very roundabout, very annoying, very tedious way of simply asking, what's the sum of 50 integers starting from 1? 50 consecutive integers, 1 through 50. That's all they're asking here. What they're asking here is, what's the sum of 50 consecutive integers beginning with 1? Instead of simply asking that question, they decided to turn this into a drama. That's all it is. If we can figure out the sum of these 50 integers, all we will do is add 800 to it, and we're done. So let's find it out, shall we? We're looking for this sum. We're looking for this sum right here. Before we worry about the sum of these 50 numbers, let's take a simple example. For example, if we had 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and plus 6, I'm going to I'm going to replace this plus sign for a second. If we have to find out the sum of these six numbers, one way is to simply add them up because there are only six of them. It's very simple. This is a 10, that's a 5, that's a 5, that's 20, and that's 21. That's very easy. Another way we could have figured out the sum of these six numbers is to understand that because there are six of them, because we have even number of numbers, the average of these six numbers, the average, is 3 and a half. Average falls between 3 and 4. And since we have six numbers, therefore the sum of these six numbers, the sum of this six number will simply have to be the average, which is three and a half, times the number of numbers. We have six of them. Three times six is eighteen, and half of six is three. There we go. You see, we just found twenty-one, it is twenty-one. That's exactly what we're gonna do here. That's exactly what we're gonna do here. But first, we have to figure out the average of these fifty numbers. Well, the average of these 50 numbers is going to be the average of the two middle numbers. Two middle numbers are 25 and 26. 25 numbers on this side, 25 numbers on that side. So the average is going to be right in the middle, which is 25 and a half. The average, let me rewrite it. The average is going to be 25 and a half. And therefore the sum is simply going to be 50 times 25 and a half because we have 50 numbers. 25 times 5, 25 times 5 is 125. Therefore, 50 times 25, 50 times 25 would simply be, we have a 0 here, so we just stick a 0 here. And half of 50, half of 50 is just 25. So we end up with 1275 is what we have that what we have put in the account starting with week number one we started out with 800 we started out with 800 and then we went ahead and deposited another twelve hundred and seventy five dollars over the course of next 50 weeks therefore we must have two thousand and seventy five dollars at the end of the 50th week that was question number 123 question number 123 that was the end of the page also. We're going to stop right here. It seems like a logical place. We're going to stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow. And we'll pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, I can help you get ready for the exam. Simply send me an email. Go to my website at kashwaniprep.com. And over there, you can send me an email or you can fill out a form if you wish to tell me a little bit more about yourself. And I'll be more than happy to do whatever, whatever it is that I can do. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.